Hey guys, my name's Daggett, this is Daggett Designs, and welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, we are going to be drawing three easy neo-traditional tattoo flash designs, and we're going to get straight into this one, but just before we do, I want to let you guys know that if you are new to my channel, I would really appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button if you like today's video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on new videos when they come out. Alright, let's get straight to it. Alright, so the first design that we're going to be sketching today is going to be uh, almost like a lucky rabbit's foot, but it's going to be a lucky tiger paw. So we're going to start off by drawing some ovals. Now, I like to make them sort of arc, like this, and the last one a little bit lower and on a slight angle, so they have this arch shape. And then in the bottom of this, I'm going to do two little overlapping sections, like so just going to give us the sort of bottom section of the paw and then just behind this I'm going to come up from this side and up from the bottom section here that's just going to give us like the little wrist section and now you can come to each of your ovals and put two little curved peaks like so and that's just going to give you uh, rough guidelines for the claws Now, normally with a lucky rabbit's foot, they're going to have some sort of uh, attachment point for like a, a ribbon or a rope, something to tie it with. So in this case, I'm going to do some, some nicely ornamental little piece of metal, like a little cuff. So you're going to cut off the back of the paw like so. And then I'm going to double up a line on the outside of this coming around to create like a little lip like so. And now you can pretty much do whatever you'd like. There's so many different options here. I'm going to add these sort of curving inwards sections on each end like so. And I might bring that in a little bit more like that. And now you can come across the top with another line. Maybe double up on this one as well to create another lip or like a rim. around the top there. And now to sort of decorate and give this a bit of a pattern, I might split this up into a few sections like so. And just put in like a floral uh, petal design maybe. You can sort of do whatever design you'd like, whatever pattern you would like to decorate this. If you wanna just do triangles or something, it's up to you. But there's so many different approaches to this. You can really play around with it and make it your own. But in this case, I'll just do this like sort of simplistic uh, flower petal pattern like so. Now, at the back of this, I'm going to do a straight line in the middle. And I'm pretty much going to do a dome or a semicircle to cap the end of this off. Like so. And at the top of that, you can just do a little circle as well with another little circle on the side. Now you could do rope. Uh, or you can do ribbon or chain. Again, there's a lot of different options, but I'll just show you how to do these ribbons. So I'm gonna do these long sort of S curves and I can come out, maybe overlap like so. And when you get to the part where it curls around, you wanna get nice and close to your line again so that you've got these two lines running very closely to one another. And then you can follow the outside line down and maybe curve back like so. Now you can come from the inside, maybe following this first crease around like this to add another fold into your ribbon. Now I kind of want this one to get nice and tapered down here. Maybe we'll come around like so, this sort of front bit like this, which can loop into there. Maybe we'll see a little bit of this back section coming out like this and we can loop that around and add this little curl uh, like so. So that's going to give us like a piece of ribbon and I'm pretty much duplicating that exact same thing uh, with some minor variations on the other side. 
Now, before we get onto the details, I just want to quickly show you that this exact sketch that we just did is available in the Big Cat brush set, which is only available at daggettdesigns.com.au. Uh, this brush set includes a whole bunch of fully designed Big Cat uh, tattoo designs uh, with the line work included, but I've also included a whole bunch of sketch designs. So these are basically like under sketches that I've uh, personally hand drawn for you guys. They include uh, a bunch of full body cat designs or big cat designs, Japanese big cat designs, as well as uh, paws and faces. And these are going to not only give you a really solid foundation that you can draw your own line work over the top of, but you're going to be able to get creative, kind of like the design we're doing today. You can take a paw and add your own elements, really make it your own. And not only this, but they're going to help teach you the construction of these bodies. Uh, as you can see, I've included contour lines and details such as the circles for shoulders and the paws. This is just going to give you a good idea of proportion uh, for different details in the face and the bodies. So that's going to really help teach you guys how to draw these big cuts. This brush set and a whole bunch of others are exclusively available at daggettdesigns.com.au. I'll leave a link in the description. Now to go ahead and add detail to our lucky tiger paw, we're going to start with each claw. I'm just going to follow my line down and back up. And then I'm going to do an S curve around like this. Now on the top half, I'm going to come up and around with these little lines this basically these little flicking lines that are going to create like this fluffiness on top of the paw and then underneath I'm just going to come around like so and you're going to repeat that little pattern for each of these little ovals that you've drawn now for the inside section of the paw I'm just going to come down like so uh, for the inside section over here, I'll just loop around and sort of join that back in. And then the bottom of this paw can just link up like so. Now at the very back of the paw here, you can just come up with another little line like so to link it up. Link up the top of that line and then you can cut the top off. And then what I like to do is come to the edge. Uh, so basically, this will be the dividing line from the top section to the sort of fleshy portion on the bottom. And I like to come in and just do a whole bunch of these little flicking lines that indicate uh, fur. And you can do a couple of layers of these if you'd like to. Okay, just like that. Now in this case for our stripes, I'm just going to use my sketching brush on its side. And pretty much sketch in some stripes. And if I was doing this uh, on pen and paper, I'd be using a brush pen for this. It gives you really nice stripes or maybe even a colored pencil is going to work really well for this and that's pretty much going to give you a really nice little lucky tiger paw tattoo design all right next up we're going to be drawing a near traditional style rose so we're going to start off with an oval shape you want this oval to be facing in whatever direction uh, the top of the rose is going to be in and now i'm going to cut across the center of our rose like so it doesn't have to be perfectly across center with a long sort of s curve and now I'm going to cut out from here with another curve. And we come back from center again, cut out this way. And that one will sort of come up into a triangular shape and come back down like this. Now for the center portion of the rose, I'm going to come up, back down like so. Maybe add in another fold at the side here. Another little sharp area here that comes down into a fold. Same sort of thing on the inside and inside of that as well. So these are basically, um, I guess like a triangular, curved triangular sort of shape like this. And then I'm bringing a line around to the front to create a fold in which this is the inside portion of that pedal, if that makes sense, okay? So once we've done that, that's the sort of main inside section of our rows. Now to place our petals, I want these to be more sort of irregular shapes. Uh, Neo-tradition roses, most of the time, tend to have a bit more detail and they tend to look a little bit more natural. They look a little bit more like an actual rose as opposed to uh, the sort of very, very simplified and neat uh, traditional style look. So. I think it's important to make your petals different from each other instead of all the same. Try to make them unique and try to make them look like actual rose petals. 
Uh, another little piece of advice with this one is what I just exampled there is when you're coming towards the roses that are on the side or sorry the petals that are on the side I like to cut back on this steep angle as opposed to doing uh, to doing something like this because we're actually seeing more the rose on the side angle like so so you're gonna see this sort of drop back and underneath uh, the rose bud section there so I like to make sure I've got those really sharp sort of drops in there now for our leaves I'm going to basically add I'll do an S curve over here like this maybe a little curve line coming out here curve line coming out here and another one coming out over here now I like to keep these lines really curved with traditional roses I usually do slightly straighter lines but with the near traditional ones i want them to be curved so i can do nice soft looking leaves now i'm going to open up a new layer for the sort of uh, actual line work and to do these lines that come over our oval you're going to trace over your top line uh, fairly solidly add in a few bumps for your fold overs just depending on how you want them to look and then i like to follow my the bottom of my oval around to sort of create this little teacup shape that is the petal on the very front there now you can follow your next line up and out like so adding in the fold over and then following your oval shape around again into the bottom there that's going to create the bottom half of the rows you can follow this next fold over up and out I like to change the shape of my fold overs a little bit too. Just can be handy in creating a, a slightly nicer looking design. Now once you've done the center portion of your rose, it's time to do the petals. These are going to be really simplistic in just following your line work and adding some variation where you'd like it to be. And by variation, I just mean you can add in uh, extra little creases, extra little sort of divots maybe tears in the petal that sort of thing uh, again this is going to give them like a natural and organic look that makes sense for a more near traditional style rose now another little detail we can add to our rose here which is going to be really classic for near traditional style designs is going to be some contour lines that follow the outer contour of the petal and then this inner contour so outer and inner and then of course you can just do some of these outer ones now these are usually done with very light lines and if if they're being tattooed they're usually done with a gray wash or a really small lining needle now the last thing we need to do is add in the leaves uh, this is going to be fairly simple i'm going to follow my line out at a peak and then come out and back in and then i'll come to the other side of the line i'll come back a little bit on this one and just add a little line in like that and then you can add in again these little contour lines but these ones are actually the veins of the leaf so they are sort of necessary and you can do them whichever way you'd like whether you want to do lots of small ones or these bigger more spread out ones is up to you i'll uh, follow my line out again creating the tip of the leaf then coming back and i'll come back from here as well and then add in these lines I like to sometimes do groupings of two and then spread out a couple of individual ones again that's going to just be dependent on your style and how you want to do it okay and that is going to give you a really nice near traditional style rose all right last but not at all least we are going to be drawing a near traditional style moth these are really popular uh, near traditional style designs I'm going to go ahead and start off with an oval and I'm going to put another oval inside. I'm actually going to do a little gemstone on his back. Now on the outside of my oval here, I'm going to add in our first oval. And I'm going to add in a second sort of half oval at the top here. Like so. Uh, at the very top, I'm just going to add in a circle with another smaller circle on each side. Which is just going to give us our roughly placement for the head and the eyes. But that'll be changed. And then these two s curves coming out like so are going to give us the antenna all right we're going to trace a line back across the body like so and then bring a line down 
on either side for the back. Uh, this is actually going to be on a slight angle. It's not going to be a flat back view. Okay, and I'm going to split that up using some lines like this, just coming down the back. Okay, now to put in our wing shapes, I'm going to start, uh, you know, just back from the head sort of area. I'm going to come down like so. I'm going to come back up and then back up like this. Now moths tend to have these droopy laid back wings as opposed to butterflies which have that more open sort of look. Uh, now coming just past halfway on here, I'm going to come down, in and up towards the center for this sort of secondary wing. Okay. And for the other side, you're pretty much going to do the exact same thing. Now to add details to this, I'm going to open a new layer. This is probably the most complex of the three designs, but I'm sure you guys are going to be okay. You're going to be able to do this. So start off by tracing our inner circle. This is going to be our gemstone. And then on the outside of this, I'm going to start by adding this little rounded portion at the top. And I'm going to come down to the back of here and start adding in these little flicking S-curves which turn into these sort of just C-shaped curves coming all the way up and around and that's going to give it a really fluffy sort of appearance towards the center because moths are sort of hairy okay like that and now the oval I did just on the outside of that is also going to have some uh, sort of hair on it but I'm going to start by adding in an eye front of the head like so and the top of the other eye and then I'm going to add in this other sort of uh, fluffy section just coming around with some S curves and then some straight up curves all the way around to the head for the antenna you pretty much follow your line out like this and actually I like to follow it in so I can start with a thicker line at the very top okay and then I'm going to pretty much follow that back with some S curves as well, which going to taper down towards the start of the line to connect back into the head. Now I'm going to run through the pattern on the wings, but make sure you stick around to see how to do that gemstone. Now, first for the wings, I want to split this up into a couple of shapes. So I'm going to split it uh, to begin with into three, just using a couple of curved lines. Uh, one, two, three. No, it took a couple of tries to get that right, but uh, three lines like so. And then I'm going to split it in half by coming between those lines with a curve like this all the way back. And then I can double up on those curves as well. This is going to create like the pattern of the wings. Now for this center line here in the top half, I'm going to add in this either leaf or eye shape, whatever you want to call it, and add a double up in the center of that. And then for this one next to it, just a small one. And for this one, I might do a smaller and skinnier sort of longer one. Now this is where it's really up to your personal creativity to design what kind of pattern is actually in the back of your moth. Now the bottom half of the wing here, I'm going to join up to those lines that we did using some curves like so linking back to the inside there and then I'm going to add a few lines in between each of those lines that we initially drew like so now these don't have to be perfect uh, perfectly spaced or anything like that it really depends how you want it to look and then I'm going to come in between each of those lines just dipping in and connecting to each line and pretty much following this all the way back to the end of the wing. This is gonna give you uh, a stripe across the wing here and the curvature of these along with the stripes or the lines is going to give it a textured look. It's gonna give the wing a bit of a bumpy textured look. So that's gonna be the pattern for that half of the wing. For the bottom half here, I'm gonna draw a line that comes directly through our peak and I'm going to come down, maybe do this little knobbly bit at the end of the peak. And then go one, two, three. Maybe draw lines to those 
bumps that I just drew like that and then you could do another leaf or eyeball shape at the bottom section here maybe another smaller skinnier one there and then for the inside portion here you could do a whole bunch of the small lines and then a whole bunch of your little curve lines to create that sort of stripey pattern again so you can repeat the pattern from the top half of the wing onto the bottom half here now once you've done both wings it's ready to do the gemstone i'm going to add a little circle in the corner that's going to give you a highlight point and now i'm going to come down each side of this with a light line like so and they're not going to quite come together in the bottom the bottom's going to be the lightest point there as well as our little highlight ring at the top here and the very edges which we've left uh, light as well and now you can come in from the top and just shade until it gets lighter at the bottom now this can be done with a pencil if you're sketching on paper as well and of course it can be done with watercolor paints or copic markers or whatever your finished medium is if you're painting this but that's pretty much going to give you your gemstone and that's basically going to give you your near traditional style moth and that, ladies and gentlemen, is three easy-to-draw, near-traditional tattoo flash designs. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you followed along. It was a lot of fun. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. It really helps the channel out. Leave me a comment down below letting me know what you'd like to see in future videos. And if you are new to my channel, like I said, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, bye-bye. If you like the content that I make and you'd like to support the channel, make sure you smash that like button. And hey, while you're at it, check out one of these other great videos.